Hi everyone, welcome to April virtual release notes. Um, I feel like we need to have Backstreet Boys playing like, oh my God, we're back again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I feel like every time we get on here. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, this is virtual release notes and we are going to take a look at the latest enhancements that our team has released over the last two months. So during our time today, we'll show you the value of the newest features and how you can get started saving time and effort right away. So I love seeing everyone say hello in the chat. Yeah. Let's us know yeah. that you're all there um, and excited. So let me get to our next slide. All right. So in case you are not familiar with us, I want to take a minute to introduce ourselves. So my name is Amber and I'm the product marketing specialist here at Jackrabbit. And in my former life, I was a dance teacher, a dance student, a competitor, and um, also worked as an office assistant in a dance studio. So needless to say, I can totally understand your daily goals with a system like Jackrabbit. And I'm located here in North Carolina where our headquarters is, and I love being able to see our clients and potential new clients on the trade show floor. So I'm excited for trade show season coming up later this summer. And of course, yeah. I am joined by my partner in crime, Marie. Hey, everybody. <laughs> if we have not <laughs> We got some feedback. <laughs> uh, if you have not met before, my name is Marie Baldwin and I am the training specialist here at Jackrabbit. So most often you will see me like this, just pretty much through a screen, doing all of Jackrabbit's online trainings and such. But as well, this year for the first time, I am going to be hitting trade shows. So that is really cool. And yeah. like Amber said, she is in North Carolina uh, previously. I was in Vancouver, Canada, and I have actually just relocated as far east, guys, as we can go in North America. I am in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. So if we have any Canadians here today, hello, fellow Canucks. And I am so excited to just get back and show you guys like all of the new stuff that we have in store for you. Awesome. So glad to have Marie on the East Coast, but she's still a Canadian, so she's representing. All right, so before I hand it over to Marie to give us a nice tour of the new enhancements, I just wanted to give a preview of what we're going to be focusing on today. So a trend in the types of enhancements released since our last virtual release notes is consistency. So the team has been adding columns to um, report results that are valuable information that you're trying to pull and also updating communication options in various reports so that you can choose to email, text, or send push notifications with the mobile app. Of course, we also refine multiple policies and staff availability as recent features um, release at the beginning of the year, and we've added a new integration to our marketplace. So Marie, are you ready to take it away? I am. I am. All right, all right. for you all. There we go. So I am right now on my active uh, class or active students. Sorry, just one second. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Uh, just so everybody knows, if you need to make the screen a little bit bigger, you can arrow in the chat window and that will make everything a little bit larger for you. So Amber, do you want to tell people why I'm on why I am on this active staff page? All right, let's get into it. So um, the brand new integration that we have here at Jackrabbit is called Yardstick. And this is a human security platform and is a great way to screen potential employees or confirm um, certifications that's coming in the future um, for current staff members. So this initial release is kind of what we call phase one of the integration. This is a pay-as-you-go structure, so you're only paying for the screens you use at the time of initiating them. Um, we've got a standard package option available for you um, in the U.S. And then also our Canadians, you do have the ability to start screening um, with Yardstick. It just won't be um, through the native integration yet, but that is coming. Um, so 
through the Jackrabbit platform, you will be able to initiate these screens. And um, Yardstick also has some promotional things going on. So if this is something you're interested in after Marie shows us how this works, feel free to um, check that out. So Marie, you want to show them how they can yeah. do this from yeah. looking Jackrabbit? So the first thing I'm just going to bring all of your attention to is this furthest right hand column here. So once you are set up with using Yardstick, you will have this column. And you can see that I have some that have reports. So these are people that have already had their screening process completed. And then here, the last two on the bottom, these have not been screened. So let's just have a look how simple it is. You just need to come over to the three dots right here for your row action. Oopsie. And then you're just going to click on this yardstick invite and it will step them through and take them uh, through their email address and invite process to go ahead and add all of their information. So what do you get? So let's just have a look. So this is a report that had already previously been done. So it's just going to take a little moment to load there. So you can see this one is for Stephanie Andrews. It gives the date, their date of birth, their you know, primary information. And then you can see right here, they've got a status of cleared. It was done through, oopsie, sorry, that standard package, the date it was created, and then all of the certifications, or sorry, the checks that were done. So they were checked through the National uh, Criminal Sex Offender and Global Watch, and there was a country criminal check as well. And then these are all of their documents. So it is really that simple. And I have to say the thing that I do like about Yardstick the most, everyone, is that it is that pay as you go. So it's not an additional like $9.99 a month or anything like that. It, if you have a new staff person coming on board and we all know that, you know, we want to keep everybody at our facility safe. So I absolutely love this integration. Yes. And I have heard a little, you know, um, rumor from my friends at Yardstick that um, one of the future features that they will be offering is confirming certification. So think of like your safe sport and CPR that you require your instructors to have. So good things to come. Super excited to get started with this um, new partner. Yeah. So um, next up are some pretty exciting updates to the enrollment detail report. So Marie, do you want to show us what is new there and how these changes are helpful to our clients? For sure. So I, uh, the enrollment detail report it has to be one of my favorite reports. And these are just a few changes while they are action technically may seem like small, but they can make a really, really big difference when you are using it. So I do have my favorite it. So I'm just going to come over here to my enrollment detail report. The very first little change that we have made is that you can now multi-select different category ones, twos, and threes. So if I knew I only wanted to bring in my category one of ballet and camp that have classes for the intermediate level and the category three of recreational, I can absolutely do that. So I'm just going to refresh this. I'm just going to run my report wide open for you. So yes, there are a ton of columns and we have actually added in a whole bunch of new columns for you. So you'll see these over right here. So in addition to everything that we already had, we've added uh, the address, your city, state, and your family zip code. And these are defaulted to show on, but something that we don't talk about this a whole lot. So here on your show high columns, you can select which columns you want to show every time that you come in. So if you wanted to just say uncheck everything, and then only just want it certain information showing, you can. And then you would just click apply and save. So in the next time that you come in, those are the columns that are going to show. So I'm just gonna cancel out of that and go back home. Okay. All right, I love that one. Lots of good stuff there. 
Um, I know the Facebook group was super excited about that one when we announced it. Um, but that's not the only report that got a little update. The team also made some changes to the all students report. Marie, can you show us what's new and how these changes are useful? I absolutely can. The students, all students. So the first thing that you may notice is that now our student first name and last name are broken out into their own columns. And then as well, we have got the, let's see, it's just one second. I am going to squeeze my grid, I meant to do that. And then you can see we have also added in our primary contact and separated out first and last name. And something that you will notice that far column over on the right is that now, you can show all of the current classes. So on my screen, it is taking up a lot of real estate right now because <laughs> Diane is in a bazillion classes and she's just all over the place. So you can see that every single class is listed. And then as well, uh, when it comes to searching on your filters, just like with the enrollment detail report, you can multi-select your category ones, twos, and threes. So, but Amber, it wasn't just the students' report that we made some additions to. We also did some improvements with the all families. So I'm just going to. Y'all, this is why I keep her around because she keeps me on my toes. <laughs> so, again, I'm going to squeeze my grid so I can see every single one of my columns that I have. So, you can see that we've got your contacts listed and then as well these are not defaulted on but i'm just going to show you let's go all the way down to the bottom we have added and i'm pretty sure our friends at british wind school are going to absolutely love this i believe that they had asked for it uh, oopsies moving too fast you can now have your jackrabbit family id or a custom family id so i'm just going to click to show those here so you can see right here. So this is your Jackrabbit family ID. And this is what we use when you are on a family's page in your address bar up here, you will see that family ID number, but then you can also have a custom family ID. So maybe you're tracking something different and you want to use that field for something you absolutely can. So you can see right here on the Adams family, I'm just going to click on it so you can see where it is. So under their summary, this is the account ID, and this would be their family ID, 5678. And then down here, I know it's really hard to see in this bottom left-hand corner, that is their Jackrabbit ID. So now you can have a way to search and report on those, which is going to be amazing for everybody. And yes, um, we did have a question from Angela. Um, how does the Jackrabbit ID benefit us or how is it used in what way? So if I come here and I click on Adams, so this is their ID there. So their ID is up here. So that's just how we basically like sort out the pages. Every family has a family ID. Every student has a student ID. Uh, sometimes if you're doing a user activity search, you will see that ID over in the far right hand column. So sometimes you can use that that way. That's a really great way to use it. And then the custom ID, that could be anything at all. I just put in five, six, seven, eight, but you could put letters in your like or a word in there if you want it. Do I remember correctly from my support days that this could be used for like a barcode or something? It could. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, all right. So loving the new columns there. And thank you for rem remembering about the additions to the all families report. Yeah. Um, all right. So we mentioned consistency earlier on. Um, in addition to serving up information in a report consistent with the data on a particular record, the team is working on adding communication options to more reports. So what does that mean exactly? Marie, do you want to show them where this is and what it means? Yes. 
I absolutely can. So I'm just going to bring up this acroplast. So now going forward, if you come here and you click on to email or text your families, you do have the option to send push notifications. So that is if you are signed up and using our mobile app, Jackrabbit Plus. That is awesome. So we're tightening up all areas so that from everywhere that you will be able to send your HTML email, your plain text, your push notifications, and as well if you needed to send a text message if you're signed up for text messaging. As a marketer, I love this journey for all of you. Um, it really helps get the right message to the right people, and we know that is always something we're trying to reach here. So. Now we're going to shift a little bit. Whether you print statements or email them, there are times when parents may need to see transactions for one student in the family. Marie, can you show everyone how this is now a possibility? I sure can. I, I feel like I say this on like every virtual release notes or any training that I did, but even though I am the trainer here at Jackrabbit, you will see me from time to time in support and just on support this past Monday, I had somebody ask about this. So what the situation was or the scenario was, was that a parent needed a statement for tax purposes only for only one child for their summer camps from last year for tax purposes. So I'm just going to bring up my family here. Right here, under statements. Email statement. Right now, here you can see I have the option to select to email statements by student. So I can, if I had more than one student, or let's just say I had five students, and I wanted to get an email statement for just two of them, I can hold my control key or I can just select one if I want it. And then that statement is going to bring everything up just for Elliot. It is a great feature. Awesome, I love that. So, so cool. And nice and easy. Yes. All right, so if you've attended virtual release notes in the last few months, You've heard us talk about multiple policies. As with any other exciting new feature, the Jackrabbit team continues to refine and improve even the new stuff to make sure it's most beneficial for as many of our clients as possible. There have been a few updates to this feature since the last time we got together. So Marie, can you show us those updates? Absolutely. So whether I'm on, um, sorry. Whether I am on an individual class or if I'm going to come to, let's say I'm getting ready to do my fall 2022, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying that, fall 2022 session, and I want to come in, I want to copy all classes. So if I were to come here, click on copy classes. So you may remember from before, like session, there was an asterisk there, your new session, your start date and your end date. But now at the very bottom, this is defaulted to be blank. So it's gonna force you to either choose yes or choose no to copy your policy groups. And then we've also added just this little reminder here to check your policy groups after copying, classes restored after archiving, do not have policy groups assigned. So that situation would be, for example, if I wanted to copy over all of my classes that I had in my 2021 session, and I had already archived it, restored it so that I could do a copy, then there would not be any groups there. But I love this. And then same thing, if I were to come to a class, let's click on this one. And if I wanted to copy the class here, same thing here. So I have to have a class name and I have to choose whether or not I want to copy my policy group. So yes or no. I love that. It's like, no way. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great thing that was added there. All right, so, oh, Ashley just threw in a question that was related. If questions are coming in as we move on to something else, I'm just gonna save them for the end. Um, but Ashley asked, is there a way to freeze slash put policies on hold while you're updating them in case you are taking a few days to set them up so parents don't keep getting promoted in the portal to re-agree? Yes, you can have them not as part of Sorry, Amber. <laughs> yes. 
You can have them not assigned to the class. So I know when uh, people were first even getting in and doing up their policies, when policies first came out, a lot of people were going in and even doing it in Word and getting their verbiage set and then going. But you can add policies into Jackrabbit without having them add it to a class. I hope that helps. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, and one more from Eileen. Are policy groups only by class? Can they be applied by e-payment method or e-payment schedule? No, they are as far as two classes. Um, but you could have something in your policies regarding your e-payment method or your e-payment schedule. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Marie, aka my Vanna White. Um, <laughs> So uh, next up is um, a bonus feature that I did not mention before. So as of now, our international clients can connect with Twilio for international text messaging services. And I don't know if she's here today, but our friend Marguerite might be doing the happy dance because she's all the way across the world pretty much. Um, and I know she was interested in this the last time we were talking about how it's up next on the list. So Marie, can you just show us where clients can go to set up texting with Twilio? Awesome. So we're gonna uh, go to the year. General. And then text messages. And then if you want to get set up with Twilio, you can just right here, just need to get connected and set up with them. Right through Jackrabbit. It's that simple. Awesome. Well, you guys probably didn't even realize it, but I just skipped over something and Marie is probably wondering what I'm doing. I forgot about um, the parent portal. So there was an update to some verbiage um, that was a little inaccurate for the majority of our clients. So um, this was when fees were posted and everyone has a slightly different process. So Marie, can you show us what the parent portal says now when fees are posted? And I apologize for going out of order. That is absolutely awesome. So, oh, I was out of order, but I came out. So I have already added uh, Elliot to a class and it is already in my shopping cart up here. I'm just going to come here. So you'll see here, our records indicate that your account has an alternative fixed fee arrangement in place. No fixed fees will post your account until, and then that is the name of my training database test, <laughs> has reviewed the status of your account. And then right here, now it says you will not be charged for these classes. The fixed fee amount is subject to change due to this new enrollment and will be reviewed by, and then it's the name of your organization. So it's just a little clarity, everybody, on that because this is a really good example of the idea of portal working mm -hmm. seamlessly because somebody put that in there and then other people voted on it. A couple of people mentioned it on Facebook and our product team were like, yeah, you know what, that, that's, that was a miss on our part and we're gonna change that verbiage. So thanks guys. Yes, thank you. That was a really good one. Anything we can do to make your uh, your phones ring less is a win for us. All right, so I think that is all that we were going to demo for today, but we are going to talk about what's coming up next. So I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, and I'm going to put my face back on here for you guys. Slowly but surely. There we go. Coming back. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take a look at what is coming up next. Um, there's not really anything for us to show for you right now because some of these things are in the very early stages, but we just like to let you know what is next on the radar. So um, first up, we are going to be upgrading the signing experience for Jackrabbit. So you can use your Facebook or Google account to quickly log into Jackrabbit and forego typing in your password every single time. You may have seen this kind of option referred to as like single sign on. Um, when you log in to purchase something online, access your calendar or order groceries. 
Um, if you're like me and you use Instacart for your groceries or something like that, you, you're probably familiar with this. Um, so more to come on that soon. Another update yeah. that is coming up just around the corner is a better way to track immunizations, starting with being able to customize the name of the immunizations to a preferred name of your choice. Um, so whether you're tracking vaccinations or um, certain immunizations, um, you will be able to specify that. And the data in these fields will also be visible on a few of the student and staff reports, so you can access this information quickly. So Marie, you wanna take the other two? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm just having a look to see if there's somebody in particular that is on, but they are not on. I might email them just to let them know because I am excited to let all of you know. So get ready and give me a thumbs up. You're excited that you are going to be able to send an email directly from the transaction search. So there's nothing for me to show yet, but I have two thumbs up. It's not coming tomorrow, but we have had some clients really strongly advocate for this uh, ability. So we are working on that. It is coming soon, not the next release or so, but it's being worked on. Uh, the single sign on and the immunizations will be out first, and then our team will start working on that. And then the next thing we are going to be offering substitutes on your class record. So if you have an instructor that you know calls in sick, is getting married, needs to take a week or two off, and you want to add an instructor just as a substitute, you will soon be able to do that. So I don't have an exact date, but I'm you know thinking beginning of the new school year, maybe. We'll see. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, that's one of those big ones. So um, just know that I promise they are working on it. Um, they just want to get it right. So um, yes, you are so correct. One step closer to private lesson scheduling. Um, substitutes and staff availability are the foundation for private lessons. So very, very, very exciting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I've marked a couple of things as um, questions and we'll get to those here shortly. Um, let's see, from um, our large enhancements to smaller details, I can assure you that the Jackrabbit team is working hard to improve your experience and make your day-to-day -day as easy as we possibly can. So let's go ahead and answer some of those questions, and then um, I'll leave this contact information up for you guys, so that way if you have questions later, you can um, make sure that you connect with the right people. So let's start with Christina. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to address this here, Marie. She may need to connect with support, but I wanted to ask just in case. So when she was testing the individual student statements in her database, it looks like she can't select one student. Is there a setting for that? No. Um, let me just check. Um, her and someone else, they were grayed out. Like they could see it, but it was grayed out. So. Oh, oh, I know what oh, it is. I know you would. I know what it is. Happened to me. Watch this. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen, guys. <laughs> you can take it from me. <laughs> Sorry. This is how you know we're live, people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I went to my family. I clicked on statement, email statement. So yeah, it's grayed out, right? Is this what you guys saw? You have to click on this email statements by student. Mm, and okay. Then, and then you can select them. So, and I was just, cause I had a favorite made and I didn't load it before. So just let me show you what that statement would look like for an individual student. Submit. And view it. So you can see right here. So this is my parent's name and that's everything there. And see, it only just shows just Elliot because I only selected Elliot and not Elliot and or Spencer. And that's it for that. I'll keep my share up maybe for the next time. Okay. okay, awesome. So Christina, give that a try and see if that fixes that for you. Angel is asking, is there a way to have 
the event registration form have the portal information added to it. Right now, if a new family registers for an event, they are not prompted to create a portal. This would be extremely helpful. I have submitted it a few times, but no luck. Hmm. I have not checked this recently. What have I got that's coming up here? Yeah, that would be a to add. Yeah, if anybody else on this would like that, I would just encourage you to find um, that in the idea portal and vote on it. Um, I just want to remind everyone that we get so many ideas every day and our team looks at it every day. Um, and it is truly a balancing act to figure out which things to update first and what's going to help majority of clients. So any information that you can give and add to that idea and upvote, it would be yeah. greatly yeah. appreciated. So like on the regular, there is an option about here that gives you the option to set up your parent portal uh, information. The only thing I could suggest is maybe under uh, your additional, under your questions, maybe put in that you would like them to add to it or in their in your description. That's the only thing I can yeah. think of is how to get them that information there. Um, because their email will be created, so they will be able to go in and click forgot my password and get into the portal right afterwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can, and I know I, I know the team is working on a way to make online registration and parent portal seamless. It's kind of a little bit further out than what we're talking about now, so that may be something that solves all the problems. Yeah, I, um, yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, um, Joshua. As a USA gymnastics facility, we are required to use USAG's one background check company. Any idea if Yardstick has ever reached out to USAG? The current company can be very difficult to work with, and the two organizations don't talk well with each other. That integration would be slick for the gymnastics community that currently uses Jackrabbit. I do not know right offhand, but I do have um, a contact with Yardstick who has mentioned that they are working on the safe sport certifications and hoping to have that by summer. Um, so I will add that to my list of follow-up things um, to get clarification on that because I do understand that USAG um, wants you to use their background check company. So more information to come on that. This is one of those integrations that's just going to continue to evolve. Um, and we know that particularly gymnastics and cheer, this is going to be really big for them um, with the safe sport and human security needs. So great question, Joshua, and just keep an eye out for more information as this integration develops, but I'll make sure to ask that specific question, get that conversation started. Yes. All right, let me flip back over to the chat, see if there's anything else. Uh, we did have uh, yeah. oh, on uh, it had for parents to schedule makeup classes. I've reported this many times, but no response. I'm having to schedule makeup classes manually. Uh, my first thought, and I don't know because I'm not into like somebody's particular database, is to check under. So in case you missed me, I went here settings, general, and then you scroll down. Uh, Check this setting here, always allow makeups. If you have it to select with each absence, you're gonna have to go into your database and parents, and you have to go into your database, select that they can schedule a makeup and then the parent can schedule it. If you select always allow makeup, then that will allow your parents to go in. Uh, I would definitely schedule a call with support and get somebody to just double check your settings uh, with you. That could be very individual. All right, so I will pop my screen back up here. Oh, just kidding. 
Where are my slides? Here they are. There we go. All right. So if you are um, new to Jackrabbit and have some questions before you open a Jackrabbit account, you can reach out to info at jackrabbittech.com. Um, if you are a current client, you can create a ticket with support by emailing support at jackrabbittech.com or you can use that little question mark icon when you're logged in and you can do a live chat, you can send in a ticket or you can do a request a call. Um, so I highly encourage you to take advantage of those options. And stay connected. Uh, yeah. Heck yeah, we wanna be friends. We want this to be long term. Yeah. We're in here for a marriage, you know, yeah. so. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the good things. Even Pinterest. And Marie, I think you've got a special, special little thing to share with everybody, I don't do you? Have this, little thing. this is like everyone's reward. A couple of people have dropped off, but if you stick with us to the end, you get surprises, people. Like you yes. have uh, somebody, uh, the question about support, the question mark in the top right hand corner of your database that will get you directly into support. So we have recently launched our benchmarks report so i have two to share with you so we have our jackrabbit class benchmarks report you can go ahead and download that and then as well i have added our jackrabbit dance benchmarks report so you can go ahead and download that one if you get off this and you don't download it if you go to jackrabbit class or jackrabbitdance.com forward slash benchmarks you will be able to get uh the download there as well but it's there's a ton 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 of information like things that i didn't know so we've been sharing a lot of that on our social media as well just even like how many people do by class fee and how many people are doing by total hours so it just it's a full in-depth look at how everybody else is kind of you know running their uh facilities so that's it yeah so go ahead download those and i think that's all that we have amber yeah so i just want to let our music and swim friends know we do have a smaller report for just swim and just music but they are combined in the class report with gym, swim, music, cheer, and more. So look out for those smaller reports. They'll be coming to you via email next week. Um, and then you'll have the option to download the full report if you want. But um, we do have those since they were highly requested last year. It's just a um, little less data to work with. So we didn't do the full blown report for those. So yeah, yeah. So I've got that one right there. Awesome. Yeah, good stuff for y'all. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, hope you learned a lot. Hope you're excited about a lot and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Bye everybody. Bye.